So in this video, I'm going to walk through how to customize Artbook Next for ESDE. Now, Artbook Next has a series of customization options, but they're all done through something called uh, a color scheme. So in this case, in Artbook Next, you're going to have a set of instructions here on the README on GitHub. And this should walk you through how to do all of the most customizations, but I'm basically going to walk through this visually right now. So the first thing you're going to note here is in the README, it says this thing about a theme customizations folder and ask you to make one. So in this case, if I go back to my Artbook Next uh, theme repo or theme files, you'll see I don't have a theme customizations folder yet. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to say theme customizations. And what's cool about this is you can add this folder and it won't block you from updates for the rest of the theme because this folder is essentially ignored by GitHub. So you can do anything you want in this folder and you'll still get updates for the theme. So if I go into theme customizations here, the next thing I'm gonna need to do is decide what I wanna change. So the first thing it notes here is that you should pl place a copy from colors XML from the resources folder. So what that essentially means is in the resources folder here, there's a template called colors.xml. And the colors.xml file basically is a set of properties that you can use to customize the theme in a few different ways. So I'll walk through those. The first is you can use it to change the artwork that you display on the system view, which is these kind of diagonal images you see here. The second is you could use it to change the logos that you use in the theme, which you know in this case would be the Nintendo logo. And then the rest of this pertains to the colors that are used for the theme itself. So it's a pretty simple set of color changes, but um, uh, that's essentially what I'm using here to do any of these custom color schemes you see back here. So if I go to, let's say, uh, the SNES color scheme, you could see you know, the uh, buttons change to purple, the backgrounds change to purple. That's all done through this um, color scheme setting. Okay, so let's go back here, set it back to default, and then I'll walk through step by step. Okay, so what do I have to do? First, I have to copy from the resources folder, make a copy of the colors.xml file, and place it into theme customizations. Now what this gives me essentially is a file that I could edit. Um, and once I have that file in place, what I wanna do is then go to UI settings, theme color scheme, and then change this to custom, which is all the way at the bottom. And now basically what this is doing now is referencing, when it's set to custom there, it's referencing the file that I've just added here called colors.xml, and it's referencing this file for all its settings. Okay. So now that I have that in place, let's see, what do I wanna change here? All right, so now that I have that custom file, um, let's first change some colors. For example, I have uh, some blue icons at the bottom here. Let's just change those to red so you can see how that works. So let's go to help icon color, go FF0000, save, and then go back here, and you'll see them change to red. So you can see now, just testing that this is working, it's definitely pulling content and properties from this particular file. So now that you know how to change colors, and changing colors is essentially changing hex values against these, let's talk about how you change images. So the first is, let's talk about logo source. And both, both of these properties essentially indicate to you what folder in this case, or folders, should I look in to pull images for this property? So in the case of logos, it's currently set to look in theme customizations slash logos. Now in this case, uh, I don't have that folder set up, but if I wanted to add that folder, I could do this, new folder, logos, and then um, I don't have anything in there, right? So let's find something that I made before. In this case, I created a SVG file for NES, if I move that into the logos folder, now I have a Artbook Next theme customizations logos NES file. And if I go back here and refresh, you'll see the any Nintendo logo change. There you go, perfect. 
So what this is saying essentially is when I'm on the custom color scheme, look for my logos first in theme customizations logos. And if you find one, then display it. And if you don't, then fall back to the default logo from the theme. Cool. Um, so you could basically use this to change the logos for every system if you wanted to, or only a subset of them. The key thing for logos is to make sure that they're in SVG format. That's what the theme looks for. Okay, let's talk about artwork next. So artwork works in the same way. Right now in my custom color scheme, it's pointing this artwork to the default folder for the theme itself. And what I want it to do is point it to theme customizations instead. So if I go to theme customizations, artwork like that and save, what you're gonna see here is that when I refresh, it's gonna show nothing. And I'll show you, I'll tell you why in a second. See, shows nothing. Now the reason that is, is because the way artwork works is it's looking for its artwork in a given folder. And in this case, because there's nothing in this folder, it has nothing to display. So to fix this, what I wanna do is pull in the default artwork for the theme first. So I'm gonna go into the systems artwork folder here. I'm gonna copy all of these and I'm gonna go back to theme customizations, artwork, and then paste. So what that does is it gives me a base of images to work from. So now I have basically all the images. Now with this base in place, I can now just change, if choose to change it to single system artwork if I want to, and then have all the rest of the artwork come from that base that I've created. So in this case, we're gonna to continue to edit the Nintendo one. So let's show you how to do that. So obviously I have my base here. Let's go back to the resources folder. Now in resources, there's a folder called artwork masks. These masks are what, are what I use to create the kind of diagonal image you see here. So if I go back to masks, um, I have a, a file that you could use for affinity, which is what I use. Um, there's a file you could use for Photoshop and then just a SVG vector uh, slice that you could use for in any other editor you're using. Um, I'm going to show you how I do this in Affinity because that's what I'm familiar with. Um, so hopefully you can generalize this and apply it to the software that you may be using. So let me open up Affinity. I'm basically going to open up this file and that's my vector slice. So what I want to do is use this slice here to mask whatever screenshot that I want to bring in to change the uh, NES artwork. So what I'm going to do here is go into my downloaded media folder from ESDE, NES, screenshots, and I'm just going to pick something here. Let's use Kirby as an example. Kirby I'm going to basically drag into Affinity here, and what I'm going to do is copy this and bring it into the file with the mask. And you can see me do a few things here. The first thing to note is because this is a pixel art screenshot, it's currently sized at a, hopefully a nearest neighbor setting. And nearest neighbor essentially allows the pixels to retain their crispness as you scale up and down. So I can scale this particular image up and down without any distortion because I'm using nearest neighbor. So with nearest neighbor, what that allows me to do is basically size this up. So now that I've sized the image kind of into the view that I want here, I'm going to drag that into the mask. And basically now I have my artwork. And I'll move this around, kind of get it kind of where I want it to look. But yeah, that I think that looks pretty good. And now that I have that ready to go, I'm going to go to File, Export. PNG because I want to make sure the transparency of the PNG shows through. And then again, the key thing here to note is nearest neighbor. So if I change this to like bilinear, you'll see this blurs up a bit here. And if I go to nearest neighbor, it stays pretty crisp. And that's what we want so that the image scales pretty well. Now I'm going to export this into my theme customizations artwork folder because I'm overriding the base that I've created, not touching the theme. And if I go to NES and just click Save and Replace and go back to the theme here and refresh. Oh, one second. Oh, wait, one second. Did that not work? Oops, one second. Export. Let's go PNG. 
And then let's take a look. NES. Okay, so I did override that. Ah, sorry, I put it in the wrong folder. My bad. Um, let's go to themes <laughs> and then go to artbook next. Uh, go to theme customizations, artwork, and then we're going to do NES here. Sorry about that. All right, NES, save, replace. And now, if I refresh, we'll see the Kirby artwork here. <clears throat> so that's how you change the the artwork for Artbook Next. And once you have that in place, essentially now you have this theme customizations folder with custom artwork, custom logos, and if you wanted to, custom colors as well. And this folder, again, just repeating, will allow you to make changes without impacting your ability to update the theme. So which is, that's pretty nice. So if I make changes to the root theme, add features, you could still get updates without losing your customizations. So make sure to do everything in the theme customizations folder, change your colors and paths in your colors.xml, and then add your images into artwork or logos folders, and uh, you should be good to go. Rock and roll. Yeah, so now we have a artbook next on a custom color scheme with default images for some systems and custom logo and custom artwork for NES. Hope that made sense. And uh, yeah, thanks so much. Take care.